Yeah, I'm going to go right straight for turning that thing down. Okay, praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you, everybody. We are back. Hallelujah. God bless you, sis. Good God morning. bless you. All right. We are looking forward, amen, to having a great time. Uh, what we're doing today, glory be to God, I'm with Apostle Dr. Tequita Baker, and we're talking about the power of counseling in deliverance. I do want to say, woman of God, it is a pleasure having you here with us. We it's bring greetings here from Pilgrim's Ministry of Deliverance, and of course, also from the RDU, Ralph Deliverance University. we like to give a great big shout out to you, girls. God bless. <laughs> God bless you, Apostle Irene. It's so awesome to be here with you and just uh, to tread these waters of deliverance with you. It's just an honor and a pleasure. You've definitely been a blessing to my life. I, I often come online, and as soon as I'm about to type something, one of your messages to just come up and say, stay in your lane. <laughs> what did God tell you to do? And I'd be like, oh, okay, okay, okay. But let me uh, shift back into my own lane. I uh, I can't tell you how many times you just blessed me over and over, uh, even just in the small things. So it's an honor to be here with you. Amen. Well, let me, let me say this at the word go. You know, I've been in deliverance now close to 45 years. And I started in deliverance where when the mention of deliverance and counseling was together, it had a bad name. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I want to say this to some of you out here who are in deliverance. When me and Dr. Tequita are talking about counseling, we are not talking about new age cycle babble. We're not talking about yeah. past life regression. We're not talking about hold your hands up and do a mantra. We're not talking about, amen, uh, do spins and do all kinds of meditational twists. We are talking about getting to the root cause of a problem. And the reason why I'm making that quite clear, one of the mentors that I learned from was the great uh, Wynn Worley, Pastor Wynn Worley out of the Illinois area. I love Pastor Worley. He has gone on with the Lord. That man truly was an apostolic pioneer of <laughs> deliverance. But Wynn had often talked about, you can't counsel a demon out. Got that? I mean, in other words, you, that's right. You cannot counsel a demon out. And I, and I still believe that. You can't counsel a demon out. But what you can do with wise counsel, meaning setting down with the person, getting some background, finding the root cause that the stronghold is operating in their life. That's what we're talking about when we're talking about counseling and deliverance. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to pass the baton over to you, woman of God. I, I have done thousands of mass deliverances from anywhere to a small room to one time I did one where there was over 3,000 people. And I mean, God moved. I mean, the power of God tore that place up. And what happened when that mass deliverance on that level took place, there were ministers in the audience literally having to start commanding spirits. Ministers and, and leaders sort of had to command spirits out of people sitting in the seats right beside them. And it wasn't pandemonium. But here goes the thing. The power of God moved mightily. But that was one thing that was missing. The thing that was missing was what happens after they have had that type of deliverance? Now, when they come back to themselves, how do they engage with the new freedom and the old bondage that they walked in? In your hands, woman of God. My God, that's uh, that's one of my biggest challenges uh, when I'm in services and I'm just cringing because there hasn't been sufficient teaching going forth concerning the deliverance that uh, takes place after a preaching or just in general in a service. And then there is no programs or services uh, of aftercare uh, presented to people. And so they leave the altar free but then the next few weeks, two or three few weeks, they come back, they have that same problem or that same demon or they're struggling because they have not been given 
sufficient counseling to stay free. And I think that is one of the biggest challenges, even in this time where deliverance has become more uh, acceptable and widespread and even a fad in some instances, because I'm having people come to me and they like, just cast a demon out of me. And I'm, I'm like, I, I want to do that. I have no problem casting the devil out of you. I want you to stay sustained in your deliverance and in your healing. And so uh, I'm trying to provide them with uh, life skills and applicable tools and even just scripture basis for staying free they don't want that they just want the the quick feeling of that deliverance and freedom but that quick feeling of deliverance and freedom is not sustained without the counsel without the advice and so it is so essential that we start to implement and see counsel as a godly uh, part of our salvation and at, as a part of the fullness of what it means to be healed. Because if we study the gifts of healing, even in Corinthians, we'll find that counseling is part of that. Even coaching, social work, uh, psychiatry, mental health, all of these fall up under the gifts of healing. They're just different types of healing and the way that God heals. And so a lot of times uh, what we have is people are equating deliverance to how Jesus did it, but Jesus was on the only earth for three and a half years. He wasn't here uh, long enough to do all the things that he left us as laborers to do, which was to equip and train the body of Christ to look like Jesus and be uh, efficiently discipled in the gospel where they could sustain in their salvation. I'm going to throw it back to you because you, you give well, me that. Uh, yeah, let me hit the 600 pound. Praise God. I'm getting feedback. Good. Let me hit the 600 pound elephant that's in the room. And that 600 pound elephant that is in the room is just that question. Why isn't that in the Bible? Why is it that when Jesus cast the demon out of the Gadarean, you don't hear nothing about him getting canceling. Why is it when the apostle Paul cast the devil out of the woman that was in Acts chapter 16 that prophesied under a spirit of divination in Python, why the heck didn't they have counseling then? Well, I will glad you asked. That is a 600 pounds of ignorance that is in the room. Now, why do I say 600 pounds of ignorance? When I use the term ignorant, we're not arguing or fussing, so I'm using it by lack of knowledge, not knowing. The Bible did not address that area because the Bible was highlighting just a miracle, just a pure event that took place. It would be almost like if I was a reporter and I wanted only to report an accident that a person was saved miraculously in. I would deal with the fact that the person was able to come out of a five car accident with very limited damage to their body. But what I did would not have said in the news report is what happened to them days, months, and years later. Well, what? so therefore, the reason why you don't see it, yes, the Gadarean was delivered. But remember, this man was in a psychotic state. I wonder what about Miss Gadarean. I wonder about the Gadarean children. That lady in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Now, we know, Dr. Taquita, that God does not deliver anyone that doesn't want freedom. So that though that woman even going to that service may have indicated that even in her blindness, that spirit of Python that was in her operated, but because of her heart, because deliverance is the children's bread, because of her heart, I believe that's what got her free. And when she went back to her masters, she was no longer able to be used by divination. Well, now how does she live? How does she make her living? How does she deal in the community? What is her emotional state after that? Through counseling, through wisdom, through engaging her, she could have been helped to learn how to deal with life. And I believe that's what actually happened to these people's life. These are human beings. So the Bible does talk about deliverance and healing in the area of counseling, but it, ex it exposes Dr. Tequito the manifestation of the emotion and the demon and the person's freedom. Because if you will look at, at Saul, King Saul, King Saul opened up the doorway to demonic bondage in his life through jealousy and witchcraft. And finally, he turns around and throws a javelin after David. Well, what does James say? In the book of James, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, it says, if we have envy and jealousy in our hearts, 
heart, lie not and glory not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not above, but it is first earthly, second sensual, meaning soulish, and thirdly devilish or demonic. So the succession of bondage is, if you allow the emotion of bitterness and anger and unforgiveness to come into your heart, the seat of the emotion, it can open you up to carnality. It can cause your soul to be uh, uneasy. It can cause your soul to be jacked up. And finally, it can go to the final stage till it becomes demonic. Now, so when if you were to cast a demon out of a person, a bitterness, of anger or unforgiveness, you're dealing with the demonic manifestation. But remember, we don't do what we do because we have a demon. We often get demons because of what we're doing or have done. So in that case, woman of God, that person, if they were coming for deliverance, they would have to get delivered from the demonic spirits and they would need wise counsel through the word of God wise counsel to people who understand the brokenness, the wounds, why this rage is in their life so that they can disengage from it and get freedom in their spirit, soul, and body. It's not just a demon. I know mass deliverance services are powerful. They even feel good. They're even exciting. They make a good camera op. They make a good video. But at the end of the day, when those people have finished wallowed on that floor and those demons have screamed with loud voices that have been in their character for years, that person has to now learn how to live a life not controlled and manipulated by a demonic stronghold who simply came in from an open door in their emotions, in their lifestyle, in their brokenness. In your hands, soldier. That's so excellent, uh, Apostle Ivory. And it's so important that even in this day and age that the body of Christ, especially the leaders, shift into understanding and governing and even just wanting to be counselors. Uh, we have become so quick to not really want to process people to wholeness, to progress them to wholeness, to even walk with people until they sustain in their wholeness. And so a lot of times we're doing the works uh, of the spirit as far as the supernatural, but when it comes to the natural of discipleship and training and equipping, we're leaving that for other people or the background people or whatever. But in Ephesians 4, when Jesus said that he gave uh, gifts of the apostle, the prophet, uh, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher, he said it was for the perfecting of the saints, for the training and equipping of the saints, and for the work of the ministry. Uh, he said it was for the edifying of the body of Christ so that people wouldn't be tossed to and fro by every wind and doctrine. And so after we get through delivering them, baptizing them, delivering them, healing them. We need to also produce that training and equipping. And that comes through really honoring the gift of counsel. Um, there is no understanding of the fact that Jesus was the wonderful counselor. In oh, Isaiah wow. 9 and 6, it says, for unto us, uh, a child is born unto us, a uh, son is given, the government will be on his shoulders. And he he will be called the wonderful counselor. That counseling is just uh, not just uh, a gift, but it's also a mantle. It's a government authority that should sit on us. And if we're saying that we are apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, there's a level and dimension of governing the uh, of counsel that is upon us that we should be releasing into those that we are ministering to. And so when you just giving people the gift, but you're not giving them the counsel and, and the government of the kingdom of God, then they cannot be fully equipped to walk in the fullness of salvation. And so that's why we have everybody walking around now saying, oh, I'm human. I'm having a human moment. I'm human or whatever. And not even thinking that they can shift into a level of living holy and, and honorable and true and repentant before God because they see it as something that they can't attain, but you can't attain it if you don't have the counsel of God to do it. Even 
uh, we see that uh, in Isaiah 50 and 4, it says, the Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning. He waketh my ear to hear as the learned. And so even as you are saying that you are leading and guiding God's people, you are preaching, prophesying to them, delivering and healing, there is a tongue upon you of God and authority upon you to equip them, to bring them to a place where they are being instructed, uh, discipled, they are being uh, disciplined, uh, they are being un uh, given disciplines to be able to walk in the fullness of salvation where they represent God and they're not using excuses. They're not using, you know, uh, uh, the world or our slip or all these other things. They're, they're recognizing uh, that it's not just about getting the devil cast out, cast out of them, but it is about walking in the discipleship of the counseling that is being given to them to see the fullness of salvation. Because uh, we're not serving no Santa Claus God. We're not serving no quick fix. It's just done. Everybody want magic. But really, salvation is about a daily lifestyle. It says, uh, you know, you, you uh, when you uh, accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, um, uh, you come into that place of belief with him. And then the salvation of God is about what living what you believe. Go ahead, Apostle Iger. Well, here's one thing that I want to add to you. <clears throat> Many churches today have uh -huh. people that are coming up for deliverance. And I'm talking about ministries that have accepted deliverance but have not accepted the medical counseling in the clinical part that is needed sometimes. Many of them have people who have suffered tremendous, tremendous trauma, strong holes and bondages in their life that has literally tore their emotions up. They're wondering why the person, I'll use the, the very one that's simple to explain, rejection. The, one Sunday they come up, the person's at the altar, praying against the spirit of rejection, rolling all over the floor. They're casting the demon out. The demon even talks back. I'm rejection. It actually tells its name. But the person comes back next Sunday. The anointing is high. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's something about the anointing and lack of knowledge. The anointing has the capability to move even in the midst of a lack of knowledge. But it is our place to get understanding of what God is doing and what's happening in the spirit. Now, I'm going to make my point even clearer. That person comes back the next Sunday. It seems like the demon is back. They're going, they're still rolling over in the floor, and the leader is literally confused. They said, wait a minute. And then we either or victimize the victim by saying to that person, well, you must not be living right. You must not really want it your freedom. The Bible said, whosoever call on the name of Jesus shall be delivered. And that is true. But what they're not understanding is, is that he said that he would mend the broken heart, undo the heavy burden, let the oppressed go free. He said that he would go into these wounds and heal them. So we're, we're, we're concerned with the manifestation of the demon crying out until we forget the victim. Here's what I found. Take that same person with a spirit of rejection or a some type of grief and pain in their life, go in there and bring the inner healing by the Holy Spirit. And when I use the term inner healing, I am not talking about new age psychobabble. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit healing the deep wounds in the person. That takes time. I hate to say this, but many pastors are overwhelmed with a team of ministers who don't have knowledge in what they're doing. And often the people are not getting the help that the ministry can give them if they would just be open to balanced teaching about deliverance, about healing, about inner healing, about the necessity and need of both, whether it is clinical, medical, or deliverance. And when I say clinical, medical, or deliverance, amen, I am not talking about new age, fill me up with pills, to have me messing around holding crystals and rocks in my hand. That's crazy. But here goes what happens. That person comes to someone like ourselves, talks to us, says, well, they've cast rejection out of me over and over, and I didn't get my deliverance. I said, well, here goes what happened. The anointing of God did move that demon out of you. But the wound is still open. 
It's almost like washing. You ever had that, Dr. Tequita? Do you know you can you can have a, a gap cut open in your arm? And if you just wash it and, and go to a dirty place, that that gas will be reinfected and you can keep doing it over and over and the infection will get worse and worse. So sometimes deliverance without being able to counsel, follow up and get to the root cause. Look, we all of us preachers preach as hard as we can about John the Baptist said that is laid to the root. Well, it's counseling that gets down to the root of it. A prayer line is fast, quick, slap me with oil, and God does move. Anything that we are not saying is against the anointing of God, healing or touching a person's life in a service. What we're talking about is how, what follows up after that. And I maintain to tell you that person with rejection, and I've seen it a thousand times, that person with rejection, when you get to the root cause of the pain, they can be healed in that area of pain and taught how to walk it out. And it will literally, I've literally gone back to cast the demon out. After, after we have counseled and given wisdom and prayed for the healing of the emotion, the demon actually leaves. I'm going to share one more incident here. Dr. Tequita, i never forget this. And they don't mind me sharing this. An individual came to me that was telling me, I am attacked by a night terrorist that, that terrify me. And she was distraught. She said, in my dreams, they just keep terrifying me. She said, I just don't know what this shadow figure is. Now, as she was talking to me through the gifts of the spirit, by the way, when we talk about counseling, we're talking about using the gifts of the spirit as well as understanding how the spirit, soul, and body works in an individual. So this young lady is saying to me that there's this shadow demon that's coming after me, and it keeps attacking me, and it's been going on for years. And I said to her, as she was talking, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit through the word of knowledge caused me to see a picture in my mind, in the spirit of my mind. I saw it, and the Holy Spirit said, that's the relative that she saw, that shadowy figure she saw in that light was the relative that will go in her bedroom and mess with her. And that's why her sexuality got corrupted through the emotional wound, shock, and trauma. That's why those areas of her life began to be hit and attacked by the enemy. So when I said that to her, she said, oh my God. She said, apostle, my sister has the same tormenting dream that bothers them. When, I, when, I, when, that, when the word of knowledge exposed that, all of a sudden I began to pray. And I said, father, I asked you, I said, because I saw you as a little girl. You were in that room, that, that member in your family that stood to that door, they were easing in on you. But all you saw as a child was the shadowy figure. And you covered your head and got scared. When we began to pray, all of a sudden, Dr. Tawita, she all of a sudden started almost acting like a little kid. No, no, no. And we just gently asked the father to heal the damaged wounds, to heal that wounded child. No, one, no child inside of her. Don't start that to heal the damaged emotion that was affected in that particular age group where she was at at her age. The Holy Spirit healed that area. All of a sudden, I said to the spirits tormenting her, now come out now. You've been harassing her, loose her now. What do I always say? This is not always the case. I know most of you, some of you listening at us, you would like to have a one-shot shop that does it all. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that with the kingdom of God. You have to be open to the Holy Spirit using different insights, revelation, and tools to bring healing to people. When we cast that demon out of her, God not only broke it out of her life, she shared it with her sister, and her sister got deliverance. So her deliverance wasn't all, come out, demon, <coughs> with a loud voice. Her deliverance was healing of the damaged emotion and the trauma, identifying that that dark figure that she saw that the demons were tormenting her with. And by the way, demons torment the mind with dreams because the mind, the, the avenue where dreams is, is in the carnal mind. Dreams are not in your spirit, man. They operate in the carnal mind to convey things in the spirit, either used by God, used by demons, or by your own brokenness. In your hand, soldier. That was so awesome, uh, Apostle Ivory, especially uh, uh, because one of the things that we have today is 
we we when we class the devil out of people and they don't have that counsel and revelation that you were able to give that some people don't even know didn't even know they had demons like i've i've done uh services and i've i've tried to give counsel afterwards to the person and they like i didn't even know that demon was in there i didn't even know you know or whatever and so it helps to have that follow-up counseling where you can say well this is what i saw in the spirit i, I saw god doing such and such and i saw you as this uh, as a little girl or I saw this or, or whatever, because one of the things that God gives, or he should give the deliverance minister and that he gives that person with the gift of counsel is he gives him them wisdom, revelation, counsel, knowledge, you know, um, uh, understanding and guidance uh, and even just uh, insight on how to stay free um, uh, to that uh, to that counselor or to that minister so that they uh, will know why they're casting the demon out. So I may know why I'm casting the demon out of you, but you may know not know. And then you even you may not even know you have a, a spirit in there. Uh, or what have you. And so that counsel is, is so essential to bring that revelation so that person will know, okay, and they, they will even, once you begin to give them that word of knowledge, the wisdom, and the counsel, they'll say, this happened to me, that happened to me, you know, or whatever. And you can begin to pinpoint those root areas to further bring deliverance and breakthrough to them. You know, just like you said, through that inner healing and that inner healing is where we're going in and we're cleansing out mindsets. We're cleansing out heart issues because the word says, you know, the heart, you know, our heart is where our treasure is. And out of, out of our mouths flow the issues of life. And those issues are coming from our heart heart and then we can even heal those areas of the soul so when you're talking about inner healing you're talking about uh, going in and actually cleansing out uh, uh, with the blood of Jesus and just even with the truth of God those inward parts in the inner man that need to line up with the word of God and with clarity so that person can uh, stay healed and, and continue to walk in sustaining uh, power also, one of the things about inner healing is there's triggers in there. And so if I if I cast the devil out of you, but I don't deal with the triggers that, you know, then that can trigger you to, you to have experiences. You're still having these experiences. You not know why you're having it. And even can open the doors for those uh, spirits to come back. And so triggers are often lodged in our souls, our hearts, our minds, our memory recall. And so when, when, when those issues aren't dealt with that's what caused us to have to lean on i gotta uh, do all these other things these ritualistic things to stay free no we need to go in cleanse out uh, bring healing to your memories br bring healing uh, to your mindset and your perception about what you went through bring healing to your perception of god because a lot of people are angry with god they're angry with the church they're angry with this person that didn't cast a that cast the devil out but then the devil came back and so they mad at the church and they mad at god because god didn't protect them and they have all these other misperceptions that actually hinder the fullness of healing from going forth and so when you're able to sit down in a counseling type setting or even include counseling in your deliverance process in your deliverance sessions it can bring the fullness of that to pass for people where they could be enlightened and even just totally broken free uh, another thing i just want to mention that even even as we would cast out devils a lot of times the soul ties aren't dealt with and so that person is still tied to that person or that experience or that emotion or you know to drama and you know all of these other other things and even to the spirits that transfer through that that uh you know that encounter or whatever that encounter brought uh, they could be so tied to some of that too and so you may have brought a measure of deliverance but the fullness of counseling can bring you know an even greater uh measure where they can really walk in healthiness and sustain uh the deliverance that is brought to their lives so I would like to encourage any anyone that is studying deliverance and some of you have deliverance anointings on your life. Look, uh, I, I would like to encourage you to be open to the Holy Spirit showing you the multiplicit times, the different ways that he has of ministering to the needs of his people. I'm going to share a testimony and and tell you how I came to the conclusion of, a, of, of, of deep inner healing and deliverance for a lady in my church. 
Now, I'm going to try to do a short version of this, but then again, I just will be comfortable and just take my time and make sure that people understand where I'm coming from. Now, I've been a straight up warrior. I mean, we do guerrilla warfare straight up on the floor, casting out devils. That's what we do. In my local church years ago, a lady had married a a, she, she had married a, a man that became very prominent in Delaware. I'm not going to put his name out there because I don't want to shame his family. But he, this man went to my church. His wife came up for prayer. Well, she said, Brother Ivory, could you pray for my eyes? For some reason, my eyes, I've been having a lot of trouble with the eyes. Now, with what her prayer request was, pray for her eyes. I said, okay, well, I get it. I wear glasses. I, look, I'm glad to pray what you says. Dr. Tequita, as I started praying for this woman, all of a sudden, she did not scream with a loud voice. She did not holler or do anything strange. I'm commanding in the name of Jesus her eyes to be healed. Lord, heal her eyes. Any strongholds, any demons that are coming. All of a sudden, a clear, sticky substance starts coming down her face. It was like that clear corn syrup. Very thick, very watery looking. It started coming down her face. Matter of fact, they took a towel and she kept dabbing it. And it was like, I was going like, what in the world is that? All of a sudden, the woman streamed as I'm praying. And the Holy Spirit just said, stay with it. Don't analyze, stay with it. And so I am studying, commanding, and praying, Lord, heal. Lord, deliver. Now, look, by this time, Dr. Tequita, I didn't care whether it was a demon or whether it was a matter of healing. All I know, the power of God was doing something. All of a sudden, the woman streamed out, my eyes are clear. I can see. My God is clear. It's clear. And I was like, whoa, that's deep. Well, you know, the church shouted and we went home. Well, I'm very curious. I'm, I'm a word man. So I went home and said to the Lord, I said, God, got a question. What was that that just happened? I said, why did this stuff come out of this woman's eyes? And she said, I'm healed. All of a sudden, the eyes clear up and stuff was broken. The Spirit of God told me, said that the grief and the pain inside of her manifested in her eyes. It went into her eyes. And he said, and that's scriptural. When I talked to that lady, setting down counseling with her, talking to her, I asked her, sis, tell me about your eyes. What, what were you thinking when that healing was taking place? She said, all of a sudden, while you were praying for me, the pain and grief and rejection from my mama and them. Because she said, you see, apostle, ever since I married my husband and he's a good man and he's become well-known, she didn't add it like that, but I'm making a point. My family disowned me because he was too dark. I was like, excuse me, this guy is prominent in Delaware and all your family could come up with is his skin color? She said, they rejected me and rejected him ever since we've been married. My husband has been a, been a good man. And she said, the pain is so deep inside me. And I was like, what the world? And I asked God, where is that in the Bible? In the book of Psalms, chapter 6, verse 6, David cries out and says, I am weary with my groaning. All the night make I my bed to swim. I water my couch with my tears. Listen to this, y'all. Psalms chapter 6, verse 7. Mine eyes is consumed because of my grief, and it waxeth old because of all of my enemy. Did you hear that, what it said here? My eyes are, listen at this. Mine eye is consumed by grief, meaning her eyes begin to be so weary until it had a psychological and a physical effect on her. And also because of brief, and she said, also because of my enemies. One verse says it like this, and I want you to go to the book of, I'm just sharing this with y'all, and in the uh, 6 and 2, listen to what it says here, and in, in, in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 6, verse 2. Have mercy, O Lord, for I am weak. Oh, heal me, O oh Lord, for I and for my bones have waxed, has, has our sore vexed. Now, this word here, weak, is amal, which means to droop or be sick. 
David is saying in Psalm 62, I am weary of my groaning. My, I water my bed because of my grief. Have mercy, Psalm 2, 6 and 2. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. So what does it mean? The grief and the pain in his emotions. I'm not talking about a demon here. And there are demons that will come in and attack these openings. But it's not always the case. Listen, folks, I, I, I'm, I got to tell y'all, you can't come up with little pet answers and little pet deliverance sessions expecting the same thing to work the same way to everybody. You got to be open to the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to give you guidance. The word weak here is amal, A-M-A-L, means to droop or to be sick. Grief can cause weakness in the body until you literally droop over and become sick. David's body was weak and drooping because of sickness that was caused by his enemy attacking him. Are you hearing me? This was, could be the reason why some people get spirits of infirmity. I share that. That woman got healed and her eyes stayed healed throughout the rest of her life. But the pain and the grief that her family hurt it loose. Now, here's the amazing thing. Dr. Taquita, when these people get the healing and those damaged emotions, two things happen. Three things happen. One, they get healed. Two, the demon's access is broke up. Three, they don't care what other people think about them. The very pain when God heals the pain of rejection or the pain of grief in your life, you no longer, we as counselors teach you never to depend on your abusers or people who don't understand you for your healing. Don't look to them for your healing. Look to be healed whether they change or not. This woman got free from the pain and grief, the way it manifested as an inner healing situation, not a demon. I did not cast a demon out of her, but she got free. But through counseling and the word of God, she learned how to engage her freedom with her husband with or without her family. Now I'm going to tell you, true freedom, of, true, true freedom in God is Lord set me free that if the folks that have wounded me don't change, I do. Lord set me free that if the people who don't believe in me remain the same, stay jacked up if they may, I pray they don't, deliver me, God, until I can walk in my freedom. Glory to God. In your hands, soldier. I'm fired up. I'm loving this. That's so awesome, Apostle Ivory. Um, even as you were talking about that, I just want to hit that inner healing. So again, uh, just increase people's revelation and insight uh, because uh, I want them to really even have just some identity tools uh, uh, to why they may need more than just deliverance, why they need may need inner healing. What inner healing uh, they can look for to say, okay, I don't just need deliverance, but I need counseling or I need an inner healing session because I know myself and you we do inner healing uh sessions so inner healing when you're talking about that even when you talk about this like there's trauma there there could be soul wounds uh there could be heartaches heartaches and pains even physical heartaches and pains uh there is dream and night bondage so you're having a lot of dream attacks those that that can be an indication that there is some inner healing uh that's needed it's if you if you're rebuking the demons and you're commanding things to go but you're still continuing to have a lot of demonic and uh dreams there is an indication that something in your soul or your mind or even your generational line needs to be healed um there could be some memory oppression or some questions, some things that you have uh, closed off in your mind, but the mind is, it's, it's, it's a fascinating, it's fascinating. And so even though you may not remember it, the mind is still carrying that bondage or carrying that hurt and that pain. And so it's causing you to respond emotionally, physically, or it's manifesting in different areas of your body through pain. And then there's always the emotional instability, which, you know, you talked a little bit about that earlier earlier uh, or what have you, uh, the unhealthy cycles and patterns. So you're constantly cycling, you're constantly, you know, you, you, you're, you're doing well for a season and then you're right back uh, dealing with that same unresolved sin or, or issue or stagnation or 
procrastination or what have you. There's just a constant dissatisfaction in you. And you, you know, you've gotten prayer, you, you, you've gotten deliverance, and you're still dissatisfied. You're still unfulfilled about life, unfulfilled about yourself. I always care about what other people to, uh, got to say, which is something that you even just uh, talked about. Uh, there's this lack of fulfillment in life. You're always pursuing this, 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 and that, and you're constantly of uh, just pursuing different things and nothing fulfills you. Uh, uh, there, there's a destiny misalignment where you may be walking in your gifts, but you're not walking in your purpose and then not even knowing what your purpose is. And so there's this aching or this hurt inside of your soul or your heart that you constantly experience, uh, even though you're doing a good works or you may be doing something that you like to do, but you are misaligned or you don't even know what your destiny is. So you're constantly moving from job to job, doing this, this and that, trying to find yourself uh, or what have you. There could be some indications that there are some issues in your soul. And then also just personal and generational curses and strongholds. And even as I uh, say that, Apostle Ivory, we need to come back and do a, a, a live just on that because there's so many open doors, even to the dream realm uh, that could uh, occur uh, through a generation of curses and strongholds and, and, and that people really need to understand. And then, of course, there's that demonic oppression. And even as you had used David in Psalms 51, 6 and 9, uh, David said, Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make mean to know wisdom and then he asked god to purge me with hyssop and i shall be made clean wash me and i shall be whiter than snow make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities so even our inner man it 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 it, it it possesses an innate need to be healed. Our, it, um, uh, that's the reason why we feel so discombobulated, confused, and even just hurt when our soul is not healed uh, because our soul, it actually entails our minds, our thoughts, it entails our per perceptions, our emotions, our personalities, our behaviors, and our identities. And so when our soul is disturbed, it can bring that disorder and that chaos, even the sickness and disease that you just talked about with a lady whose eyes were healed uh, to our bodies. And so inner healing is so essential because when our when we heal the soul and we heal our heart and our mind, then even things in our body begin to heal. Even things in our lives begin to heal and to line up. And so it's so essential to identify that it may not just be a deliverance issue. It may be an inner, inner healing issue where you need counseling so that you can really um, um, walk in that wellness inside of you where you're not just acting well, but you are the identity of wellness. So, Let yeah. me share. Let me share. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am not hearing you, sis. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let, let me share something for the war room. Can you hear me good, sis? Yes, Praise I can hear you. Awesome. I would like to share something, another one of my testimonies from the war room. Check this out. Years ago, and I, once again, I never use names. I only use examples to get the body of Christ to understand that things are not as black and white as they might seem to some of you. Years ago, I dealt with a, 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 a good man of God, a pastor, that was falling into immorality back and forth, back and forth. It almost destroyed his family, his wife and family. But this man of God needed to be healed. He wasn't an enemy of Christ. He was a bound brother. And I never will forget this, this deliverance session was powerful. But as we, as we sat, we, we talked and I counseled with him and all of a sudden, a man, he, he looked up and it was if he was wondering and thinking. And he said, my daddy could really preach. He said, but I remember when I was five years old, now, mind you, we came to pray. Now, what most of you say, well, we're going to cast that lust spirit out of him. We're going to loose him from that spirit of adultery. Listen at what I'm saying. I didn't just go after it as just the demon of lust, because that was only the manifestation of the wound and the bondage. Are you hearing? I, what, what we did when we sat with him and did wise counsel, 
we were trying to get to the root as to why he was tripping over his own self. Let me tell you something. Many of us have strongholds in our lives that causes us to contradict the very value. No, you're not a hypocrite. A hypocrite is determined to do what they're doing, knowing that they mean to live that way. But there are some of you that are listening at the sound of my voice, pastor, prophet, evangelist, teacher, come on, apostle. You are bound up with a stronghold that is in your life that you can't go and say to someone, help, because your title is in the way. You can't go and say, I'm bound by something that keeps driving me. I preach a great revival, but then I go pick up a whore on the, on the street. I do a great mighty move of God. Then I'm sitting around looking at porn in the hotel. Let me, I'm getting back to what I was saying here. I'm just keeping it real. As we were ministering to this wonderful brother in the Lord, he wanted, he said, look, I'm tired of being used like this. I've wounded my family. I've wounded my wife. And as he was setting this wonderful man of God, and you want to say, Brother Ivory, why you call him wonderful? Because he's not my enemy, the demons are. He's not my enemy, sin is. Are you hearing me? He, he looked up and he said, now remind you, here is a man that was preaching and also getting into sexual immorality throughout his whole life. It's just when he got married, that baggage came with him. Are you hearing me? But he still needed to be healed. Let me say something to some of you all. I know you said, if you got the Holy Ghost and you got a good anointing, you all free time you got saved. That, rea that is not the reality or the truth, not even in your own life. And I'll leave that right there. Now, here goes what happened. When he sat there, the woman of God, as we were doing counsel, he looked up and I knew as someone that gives wise counsel, he's getting ready to go into a debt that's going to give me a key to why he keeps manifesting these sexually acting out. He said, my daddy could really preach. And I'm listening at him and I'm not, and the Holy Spirit says, let him talk, let him talk. He said, you know what, Brother Ivory? I remember when I was five years old, I sat in the bed beside my daddy's bed, my mom and daddy's room, and I ran my hand between the blankets, between the mattress, playing, and all of a sudden there was a pornography magazine. And he said, I pulled it out and I was looking through the pages. He said, I remember that. And then all of a sudden, as he's telling me that, now imagine looking through the pages, he said, my daddy could really preach. Did you see that shift? I'm going like, so you watched growing up your daddy's perversion, but you watched him also preach like thunder. You watched him do a powerful conferences, but you also knew where his porn was. Follow me? That was what we call the sexual trigger. That he was sexually imprinted. Now, sexual imprinting, imprinting is something that gets a stamp in your emotions that goes against real truth, you know, but it's also a, a behavior that looked like it was acceptable, although your brain knows, your brain knows this ain't real, this ain't right. But this man had imprinted in him a father that could preach like a balls of fire, but also have pornography and run women. And that thing imprinted his belief system. Now somebody go, well, brother, I be in it. Fool knows that that's wrong. What we're talking about is a damage in a five-year-old's emotions who becomes a preacher, who becomes a husband, who throughout his life never understanding why he was so driven by lust. And he actually duplicated his father's actions. Here goes what happened afterwards. When he came out of that wonderment, I said, all of a sudden he changed and this demon come up, said, how dare you come at me like this? I said, you're coming out because I know now you came in when he was five. Yeah, I was in there when he got was five years old. That's when I entered in. And you manipulated that emotion and you built it and you've been operating. And then this man started going through powerful deliverance. I couldn't get nothing to break in his life until God showed the door, the gateway, the access. And it came through wise counsel. It came through wise counseling. That man got powerful deliverance. Hallelujah, he's free to this day. They're together to this day. 
I didn't share this to his shame, but I shared it. There is a thing that's happening in many of your lives where you have been imprinted but at a young age and it's fighting you. You don't even know why you're doing what you're doing. Absolutely. I wrote that in this book called Deliverance from Sexual Healing. This is one of my books that I've written that in. You can get it at pilgrimsministry.org or you can get it on amazon.com. But this is where it is on this book right here. God bless you. But I, I have seen certain things imprinted in people's lives and in people's emotion of sexual bondage. And all we're going after, oh, it's lust. What kind? No, you know it's perversion. Why? Well, you, you, know, you know all of them in that family is messed up. How come? How did it get there? No, let's just cast the demon out. Don't say nothing and set them on their merry way. And then when the very emotional damage, when the very wound operates in them that was never dealt with, I'm going to say this bluntly, and I'm going to turn it in your hands, woman of God. Many of us preachers out there tell the truth and shame the devil. You are wrestling with a stronghold. That thing keeps getting you. And if you don't deal with it, you're going to be a walking time bomb. That thing is going to explode later. This is war. The enemy attacks the emotions. The enemy attacks the ministries. The enemy attacks the family. The enemy attacks purpose. And he uses different ways and different methods. And the one that has worked best for him is to damage your emotion at an early age so he can govern you throughout your whole life like something with a, like a pig with a ring in its nose and the devil got the string pulling them around in your hand, soldier. My Lord, that was so profound because one of the challenges that we have is the reason why people don't want to do counseling or they don't want to spend a long time um, searching out with people what the root issue is, is they have those strongholds themselves or they're struggling with something that they feel like they can't get delivered from or they don't know what the root issue is. And even I know that you have written a, a book called Who Counsels the Counselor? And I have also uh, written uh, a book called... Um, called uh, Kingdom Wellness Counseling and Mentoring Manual um, to help um, uh, people really learn how to get to the root issues. And when I think about your book, Who Counsels the Counselor, the, le the, the leaders of this, of this era, they have to be okay with going to counseling and inner healing so they can get to those root issues. And when they become comfortable with dealing with their root issues, then they will become comfortable counseling others uh, concerning what they their root issues are. When I had talked about that scripture of Psalms 51, 69, David says, uh, in the hidden parts, thou shall make it me to know wisdom. Wisdom actually in that scripture means skillful or skillful man. It means it means to become wise or witty. It, it means to become astute or prudent. And so when you when you have wisdom, you're, you're getting understanding and clarity about those hidden issues, about those hidden challenges. And so one of the things that has happened about ministry is we made ministry about us and not about the people that we are delivering. So even when you were talking about that, it made me think about how we're just like, we when we, when we see people, uh, they, they got a spirit of homosexuality. We're just going after that. We're not thinking about their soul. We're not thinking about what we're speaking. We're not thinking about uh, how we're further hurting them. If we're further hurting, we're, you know, we're going after this. We're going after that. I know for myself, I don't know if you remember, but um, back in, you're one of the people who helped me get delivered. Uh, I actually, uh, I'll just tell the stories. I know that you've been delivered so many people, but when, when I was really searching out, I, I get to have a dream attacks. And so I would have demons pulling me out of bed. I would have attacks in my sleep, shape, shifting demons, all kinds of stuff. And I would go from person to person, a minister to minister, getting uh, trying to get deliverance and healing. And they was always focused on the sin issue. And I'm like, I don't got a boyfriend. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I ain't doing this or that. You know, and I'm just like, I, I, just, I just closed up so many doors. I'm living like a, a hermit in my house, you know, or whatever. And so nobody could help me. And, it, and actually, a lot of times things were spoken over me. I remember uh, um, uh, some people gathered around me and they was like, we going to break the spirit of something me after you and I just yelled I said stop everybody stop and I said I don't have the spirit of insomnia demons are visiting me and, and the church did not understand that they didn't understand that demons was visiting me at night and attacking me 
And so I actually had stopped going to get prayer. I was just like, I don't want nobody praying for me, laying hands on me because the, the attacks would just get worse. And I actually heard that you were coming to the region and they, they were saying the, 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 the general deliverance coming to the region. And I'm like, the general deliverance? I, I never heard of that before. And I said, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to the service and see what happened. And you actually had said, uh, you you taught, you taught on deliverance. And then you said, I'm going to sit here. I'm not going to go to lunch. Anybody want to come up and get prayer and uh, guidance? I'll be sitting right here. And I came up and you listened to my whole story. And you said, baby girl, ain't nothing wrong with you. It's your calling. And uh, until you accept this as your calling and learn, and learn how to walk in it, you'll continue to have these attacks. And I looked at you and I said, who, who want to be called to this? <laughs> And you said, that's the word of the Lord I got for you, baby girl. And he was like, I'm going to give you some books or whatever. And I'm going to give you some taste. He's like, but this really ain't going to help you because what you're dealing with, we don't deal with that over here in America, you know, or whatever. Like, these ain't no American demons, you know, whatever. He was like, that, you know, I generally hear this when I'm dealing with people overseas and in other nations and things like that. He was like, but your, your biggest key is to ask the Holy Spirit how to help you to walk in these terrains. And so and you was like, uh, uh, matter of fact, go down and get a, a deliverance bucket and, and, and a towel and help you cast a demon out of everybody else. And you put me to work. But that changed my life. Uh, I, I actually uh, came home and I, I got over the shock that this was my calling because I'm like, why wasn't I called to the glory? Why wasn't I called? I don't, you know, uh, I, I got over that. I started to the Holy Spirit give me revelation and guidance. Out, uh, what I was seeing because I actually would be extra projected out to the spirit or even the Holy Spirit just send me into the spirit realm and I would be suspended but I would run into all kind of witches and just on and on and then they would attack me. I, I would see all kind of COVIDs and God would let me see into the spirit realm and I would be seeing things that are going on and I just didn't understand it and so I, I viewed it all as attacks. I viewed it all as, you know, whatever and then when God began to give me clarity I began to uh, really recognize what was an attack, what wasn't, what was my calling, what wasn't, how to even operate in my dream realm and in my sleep realm where I I, I can wake up like 3.5 seconds and be like, get out of my room, get get out of my house, you know, whatever. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, my uh, my spirit children, they they laugh at me because I, I'm quick with it. I mean, I, I can I can stay in my sleep. <laughs> you know, whatever. But I, I, it actually helped me to be able to bring deliverance and healing to others. And so really you brought a, a revelation of wisdom that helped me uh, to even uh, uh, embody and even evolve the skills that was in me needed to walk in my calling. And so if I would have been just still focused on I got a deliverance, I wouldn't have never got delivered and healed. And so, and I, and I really had to forgive, even part of my deliverance was forgiving the people that had prayed for me that did not have what I needed to be set free, did not have that revelation, did not pursue that revelation, automatically assumed that I had a, a sin issue. I had to forgive them. And then I had to even recognize that one of the things that are happening is that we, we become haughty about God and, and how he uses us. And if people don't get free, we blame it on them or we blame it on sin or we blame it on this or we're covering up for our own sin issues. But it is so important in this day and age that we stop and just ask the Holy Spirit, pursue him for that counsel, pursue him for that revelation and that guidance so that we can really have God's heart for the person and God's heart for people, and even recognizing when we can't help people. I'm always, I, I'm one of them people, I'll go the distance with people. I'm going, I'm going, and then I have to recognize this is just not someone that I can help. Let me uh, uh, tell them to go to Apostle Ivory. I send some people to you. <laughs> I send, you know, I send people to other people that I know that can bring me a help or a blessing to them because ministry is not about us. It's about the person. And when you really begin to govern in the, the, the anointing of counsel through the Holy Spirit, you can remain humble in that. And then you begin to give the person what God is saying versus just your own issues and your whole own hurts and pains and prides and haughtiness. So uh, I just wanted to uh, share that after that story because that was so, so excellent, Apostle Ivory.
Hey Amen. This makes me want to go to the war room again. When I talk about going to the war room, amen, remember I've been doing this for close to 45 years, and I will never forget, uh, uh, Dr. Tequita, you've seen this book of mine, amen, called Breaking the Chains of Rape and Incest, and uh, I'm going to tell you how that book came about. That book was a book actually about a dear woman of God that's still to this day saved and strong in the Lord. I met her year, years ago in the Midwest. When she came to me, all I understood, and I was at the beginning of understanding demons and the damaged emotion. I kept wondering, God, you're trying to show me something, and I'm not seeing many books written about what I'm talking about, what I'm seeing. Well, by the time I got to her, she was married to a good man of God, but there were times that he could not touch her because she couldn't take it. There were intimate things sometimes that would be loose. And sometimes she would be locked up. She loved her husband dearly. But as far as intimacy, the inability to give and receive love, there was a problem there. So when she came to me for prayer, as I was ministering to her, trying to come against any spirits of inability to give and receive love, nothing happened. And I was with them for three or four days. Finally, by the second day, by and what have you, I got we had more time to pray with her and minister to her. All of a sudden, I found out that she had been molested by her father, which was a preacher, and her uncle as well. This damaged her. The rape and the molestation got into her emotions, got into her, her soul, and caused her to act out throughout her teen years, and, and it fought her. Because here she had such a wound, her father. Matter of fact, with most of you, the first man in your life is your father. And depending on the way that your life is geared, the testimony you have, that first man could set the pattern for the kind of men you bring in your life. The first man in her life, her father, molested her. Now, check this out. The wound was so great that she would start, as she grew up, she started manifesting such things as splitting when she was touched by her husband. Now, what do I mean by splitting? She, when he was trying to be intimate, I'm a gentleman, people, so that I'm going like a gentleman. Y'all, y'all got what I'm saying. When he would try to be intimate with her, she would literally lay like a rape victim and go outside of her body. She said, "Have you ever heard of that before?" And I was like, "No, but I'm going to try to see what I can find out about it." And the Lord began to teach me through her deliverance how that sometimes rape victims either or turn out and get promiscuous or actually turn in and begin to blank out. And that's what was happening to her life. And she told me, write the book. I said, sis, she said, we, I worked with her for a while at long enough. Uh, we're still friends now. And I can pick up the phone and talk to her today. And we have just a marvelous time enjoying, enjoying the Lord. But as I prayed with her, some of the things that I came up with, the reason why, I'm going to say this to you all. The reason why that we are so effective in deliverance is because these are not me just uh, saying something someone else wrote. These are actual experiences that I dealt with. And the Lord will do the same thing to you you will become more strong and more proficient when you get in the battle. Now, the things that are in this book was bound and blocked memory. That affects the soul. It, when we prayed for her, there was, yes, demons we cast out, but there was healing that needed to be done. Her memory was messed up. Now, it's not always the case when you have problems with a memory that it is trauma or a wound, but that is an open door. In this book also is fleeing mentally during sexual relationships called splitting that happened to her spirits of incest and sexual abuse this is when also in this book is called the sexual predator we dealt with that another chapter in here is called glory be the uh, sexual addiction and then the road to deliverance it wasn't all casting out demons it was inner healing it was understanding it was revelation that brought her to completeness and God has set this woman of God free, and she's free to this day. Now, I'm not going to ask you, but listen, can you imagine 
that the first man in your life, your father, who is a preacher, rapes and molests you, and then your uncle follows up doing the same. And getting upset when you, as a teenager, meet some young boy that's interested in you who don't know what's going on. They're mad because now you're, that young man is messing with somebody that they want so they can be a predator towards. But God is a deliverer. God is a healer. We share this stuff to you because people are coming for help on that level. Look, I'm, I'm at the, uh, Dr. Taquita, I am, me and Evelyn right now are at the most exciting time of our life. You know that most of y'all know, I don't travel and do conferences anymore. Not because of COVID, I could give a hoot about COVID. It ain't about COVID or anything like that. God has shifted me in to doing this. Now, there are people from the old days who want me, well, Ivory, just cast the demon out. They want to be ignorant. All they want to do is feel the anointing, but still be bound. And wonder why, like a wagon wheel, they're coming back and forth. So what we do, we set up counseling and deliverance sessions. And I make no apology about it. I make no apology about my time, neither about the fact that God has done this shift. And I, Dr. Taquita, like you, I'm seeing thousands of people delivered now all over the world. We are extremely busy. Matter of fact, I want to give a shout out to Lakeisha Sneed. How you doing, girl? How you doing, soldier? That's one of our posses. Amen. Sister Lakeisha Sneed. There you going. That's one of my posses there. God bless you. We ought to get her, Taquita. We ought to get her on one of these because that, that's my girl. She's, she's a nurse. She does other things. She understands where we're going at. She understands what we're talking about. I love you, woman of God. We'll look back awesome. into your hands before we get ready to go, woman of God. I'm going to turn into your hands and we'll get, get to close out. So when you finish your last statement, tell about your ministry. Tell about how to contact you. You know, the general got to get some rest because I got an eight o'clock session yeah. tonight and I start <laughs> five o'clock tomorrow morning. Yes. Um, it has been such an honor to be here with you, Apostle Ivory. Uh, my ministry is called Kingdom Shifters Ministries. Um, you can learn more about my ministries at kingdomshifters.com. I am also lo located in Muncie, Indiana. Uh, I, as well as Apostle Ivory, I, I do counseling, deliverance, inner healing sessions, mentoring, and destiny lifestyle coaching online, face-to-face, -face, via email. Um, and video. So uh, I'm available for that. Um, like Apostle Ivory, when you come to me, I'm realistic about the deliverance sessions and about counseling. I'll let you know up front that we will uh, do as much as we can within your session. But I truly am a counselor by nature, um, even though I am a demon buster. I bust devil's heads. All right. But I am a, a counselor by nature because I, and that's just my gift. I have a master's degree in counseling. And I have a heart to see people delivered, healed, and set free and walking in their destiny. So I'm going to let you know, yes, yes, we're going to cast the devil out of you, but there are some tools and skills that you need to stay free. And like Apostle Ivory, I've written over 50 books uh, that you, uh, um, concerning all types of things, uh, deliverance, healing. Uh, my latest book is um, uh, um, Kingdom Wellness Mentoring. A counseling and mentoring. I'm also uh, launching a class that starts tonight, uh, the introductory class. It's a 12 week course because this is a manual. Uh, God gave me my own uh, counseling theory that uh, bridges uh, spirituality and mental health together. Um, to help bring wellness to people. So if you are a faith healer, if you are a counselor, a coach, a psychiatrist, psychologist, a business owner, an entrepreneur, someone who brings wellness in the earth, you want to take this certification course because it's going to help you shift people into God identity uh, where they can really sustain in their wellness and wholeness as you are bringing deliverance and breakthrough to them. And also, um, any other books that I may have, they're at kingdomshiftingbooks.com, and they're also on Amazon. Uh, like I said, I've written over 50 books, um, and uh, I am an equipper, <laughs> uh, what have you. I have my anointing of, of, of Apostle Jackie Green, which is a, Apostle Ivory's best friend. Uh, she also has over... Um, 
hundreds of books. And yes, you have books at Rafa Deliverance U, uh, University uh, dot net. And she also have a um, her and Apostle Iris over Rafa Deliverance University, where you could take online courses and actually become licensed in counseling, in ministry, um, and in other genres. So we just uh, invite you to just check out our websites and to see what God is doing and to know that counseling is so the children's bread. It is a part of your deliverance and God wants you healed and made well in this season. And this is the best season to get, <laughs> get well in your soul because of everything that's going on. You want to be equipped to handle the trials of life and society. Uh, as we begin, continue to navigate the pandemic and as we continue to navigate in our destiny and our calling. Blessings to each of you. Well, listen, we're going to be coming back again with some other teachings. I will be bringing different people on from time to time. I would love even to have uh, a Dr. Tequito back with us also. Amen. Glory be God. My soldier there, glory be God. Sister Lakeisha Sneed and many others. We have many soldiers and warriors in the kingdom that have re that ministered to this death. Well, look, this is Apostle Ivory Hopkins, the General of Deliverance, saying to you all, good day. And remember, like I always tell you all, remember, God, he is watching. You have a blessed day. God bless you all. Peace be unto you in Jesus' name. Amen.